If you're in a rock band, you need a hell of a lot more than a limo, a mansion, and a tour jacket in a glass case at the Hard Rock Cafe. You need a cause. Daniel Johns from Silverchair lends his name to animal liberation. Rage Against the Machines' Tom Morello has been arrested for protesting sweatshop labour. And Bono endorses so many groups who are trying to eradicate third world debt that by the time he sticks all their logos in the CD booklet, there's barely enough room to credit the edge or thank God. Now, a lot of people accuse rock stars of getting behind the real easy, politically correct, namby-pamby, state-the-obvious causes. Ooh, look at me. I think black people should have food. Hey, I'll go there. Nuclear war is bad. But there's one band no one can accuse of choosing the easy, schmaltzy, ain't gonna rub people up the wrong way political cause. I'm talking about the Foo Fighters. After Kurt Cobain's death, Nirvana drummer Dave Grohl switched to guitars and vocals and formed the Foo Fighters, and has spent close to a decade releasing multi-platinum and Grammy Award winning albums. And their pet cause is so controversial and out there that many people have probably never heard of it. They promote and raise money for an organisation called Alive and Well, a group that believes AIDS is not a disease and the AIDS problem is a myth perpetuated by pharmaceutical companies and highly paid AIDS lobbyists for their own financial self-interest. And I'd like to call for a moratorium on, on the unnecessary fear. This constant promotion of AIDS is a growing problem. When you look at the facts, it is not. It is not. Alive and well say AIDS is just a new word coined in the 1980s to describe things that already existed, like tuberculosis, pneumonia and some forms of cancer. To the chagrin of mainstream AIDS campaigners, they put out books like What If Everything You Thought You Knew About AIDS Was Wrong? and tell people don't get tested for HIV because the tests are a sham. If you're HIV positive, don't take the prescribed AIDS medication. It's this toxic medication that destroys your body, not HIV. HIV is not proven to be contagious, so you probably won't pass it on through unprotected sex. And the current funding to find a cure for AIDS is misdirected. So I'm curious how Foo Fighters got involved in this. Uh, Christine wrote a book. What if everything you thought you knew about AIDS was wrong? And I found the book and read it and was intrigued by what it said. The Foo Fighters participated in this Alive and Well promotional video, with Dave Grohl and the other band members offering their views on AIDS. I think that most people have been scared of AIDS. I think that most people have been sort of force-fed the idea of a death sentence. Are you afraid of AIDS? Am I afraid of AIDS? No. Because I'm here with Alive and Well. So are you afraid of AIDS, Taylor? This is, a, this is making me not so afraid, actually. The Foo Fighters played a benefit concert for Alive and Well in January 2000, where Christine Major spread her message to Foo Fighter fans. And on their website, foofighters.com, they post articles, testimonials and banner ads for Alive and Well. As you can see, unlike Bono and his easy to digest Let's Feed the Black Children campaign, Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters really have gone for a high degree of difficulty in this whole rock crusade game. And I was fascinated to find out whether Dave Grohl was actually going to win any converts. So in a scientifically and statistically valid experiment that no one could question, we sent out Dave Grohl with the actual infected West African monkey that many people blamed for passing on HIV to humans in the 1980s. Hi, I'm Dave Grohl, and tonight I'm conducting an experiment. How many people can I convince to come back to my place for an unprotected threesome with me and my HIV infecting West African monkey? I thought I'd start off with the direct method. I'm wondering if you'd uh, be interested in an unprotected threesome with me and my HIV infecting West African monkey? Ooh, a bit of a risk, wouldn't you think? No, no, no. No. Well, that's where you're wrong. I was just kind of um, interested in. Um, whether you'd be willing to uh, get his A in the boudoir with me and my HIV infecting West African monkey. I think. Yeah. I was wondering 
If you're interested in um, shooting up with me and my HIV infecting West African monkey. No, not um, shooting up is not quite my scene. So, um, still not interested in um, coming home with me and my HIV infecting West African monkey? Well, this didn't seem to be working, so I thought I'd argue the facts. You can sleep with me and my HIV infecting West African monkey, and I can guarantee you no consequences. Besides the obvious um, pleasure. It's not contagious. You see, you, you, you've bought in to the entire AIDS myth that they want you to buy into. I know you've probably heard like a lot of really bad things about AIDS, in inverted commas, so... So, you're asking me to have sex with a monkey in the end? Well, this didn't seem to be working either. So I thought I'd go for the sympathy vote. A lot of people thought that when, like, Nirvana collapsed, like, I'd be nothing, you know? It was like, Kurt was everything. It's like, Kurt, Kurt's the head of the band. We're like, we're like the backing band. We're like, not even important. And then like, the photo would come out in Rolling Stone and it'd be like, Kurt in the front, like really bright. And then us in that kind of arty way, kind of like, all fuzzy at the back. It was like, all about Kurt. Kurt didn't write everything. Kurt wasn't like this, like this genius that like, just came up with everything and was like the Nirvana machine. You know, like I was like nothing, I was just a drummer. Like, what do I do? Kurt's this genius. Kurt has this prestigious talent. He's talking for a generation. I used to be in Nirvana. Oh well, no luck tonight. But at least, unlike Sting and Bono, I'm putting an effort into promoting an issue more goddamn interesting than saving the Afghan whale or the Amazonian monkey. Sorry, mate, nothing against monkeys. I like monkeys.